Good morning. Good, <laughs> good morning, Dana. How's life? Good, good evening for you, I guess. Almost, almost. It's 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 quite a ride. It's four four o'clock in the afternoon, so that's 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 quite a ride still. All right. So um, thank you for making. Um, the, the time for us and, and and before we start to speak about the new touchstone series um i would like to ask you to tell a bit about the history of bourgeois guitars because in america of course bourgeois is is, is very large but here in europe um uh, we are still uh, talking a lot about bourgeois and where it comes from and we're still explaining a lot so we would like to sh show to ask you to tell a bit about the bourgeois history for the European customers. Sure. Um, well, I built my first guitar back in about 1974. Started it when I was in high school, when I was in college, excuse me. Back in the day, I mean, a lot of people in my gen of my generation were guitar players, but there were no luthiers around. You know, we had the large companies, Martin, Gibson, uh, Ovation was getting big around then, and <clears throat> but it, there were no individual luthiers. There were no, there were no repair shops even. So I built a so guitar. Everybody was bound on fixing it themselves. Well, yeah, everybody had to fix it yeah. themselves. Yeah, or, or buy a new one <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> um, but I knew a lot of you know musicians. I hung out with musicians. I was I was a musician. Uh, so people started bringing me instruments to repair. And all of a sudden, you know, within about a year or so, I had more business than I could, you know, I couldn't. So I, I sort of made the decision that I was going to, you know, do this for a while and put off going to graduate school. And it just kind of took over. Oh. I really got my first start um, when I was in the early eighties, when I was working, doing restoration of, of, of the newly, newly emerged vintage guitars. That was another new thing back then, uh, for the music emporium in the Boston area. And one of the partners, uh, asked me to build a guitar, an OM and, and no one was building OMs at the time. He was an OM aficionado and collector. He wanted one with a cutaway. So I built, I built him a guitar with a cutaway. And then we showed it to Chris Martin, who happened to be in town for a, a guitar clinic at the Music Emporium, and asked if Martin would make a guitar with a cutaway. And he said, well, we wouldn't make it under our name, but maybe we'd make it under your name. And so Eric and I kind of got together and we started Schoenberg Guitars and Martin built guitars for us in the mid 80s. Uh, after that, I ran into Paul Smith of Paul Reed Smith at a guitar show in the late 80s. And he had heard about Schoenberg Guitars, never seen one asked me if I could, if I, well, I, I had one, I had one with me, showed it to him and he was quite impressed. About a week later, he called and he wanted to buy the company. So the background story was that he had a bunch of guitars made by Martin with a PRS headstock and he didn't like them. He liked what we were doing. We were actually supplying the woods, voicing the tops, all, uh, almost doing what we do, uh, with Eastman to build the uh, to build the Touchstone series. So there's a tie-in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Anyhow, long story short, I sold my interest in in Schoenberg guitars. Went to work for PRS for a while. PRS decided not to go in the direction of acoustics, and I left. And I implemented the business plan. This would have been the early '90s by then. I implemented the business plan that I helped PRS develop. And I started Bourgeois Guitars here in Maine. And then, so we have been around as a small boutique company since, really since the, the I think, 1992, 1993. Super. Yeah. And you're still a super small boutique guitar maker. You, you only make a few hundred yeah. guitars a year. Yeah, 400, 450 this year, 500 next year. But that's, you know, Taylor makes a thousand guitars a day. So, 
by comparison. So yes, we're super small. <laughs> So let's go to the to the touchstones then. Um, so so where did the idea from from touchstone came from? Well, um, as everyone knows, we were Bourgeois Guitars was acquired by Eastman Music in the fall of 2019, and kind of right from the right from the beginning of, of our discussions. It was expressed that you know their their business model is that they build um, low, good quality lower end instruments, and they are interested in building higher quality instruments, and pretty much right from professional grade all the way down to student grade, and so we fill the niche for the high end professional grade instruments in their product line and we needed something in the middle so we started talking about well how can we build a guitar uh collaboratively uh and 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 build a guitar that we could sell at, at a lower price point than we could possibly build here in our shop and but a higher quality instrument than Eastman is uh, uh, is able to produce at this moment. Although I got to say, every year their instruments keep getting better and better. So we decided that the, the the two important things about a guitar, an acoustic guitar, are the top, the voicing, the way that the top is tuned and voiced, and the final setup and playability. So the way that it works is that we build and voice the tops here uh, in our shop. And we've set up a whole new division to be able to do that. And we ship the tops the, cho- the tops to Beijing. Uh, they're incorporated in the guitars, which, which by the way, we designed. So we, we did the design work as well. And then the finished instrument is shipped back to us for setup and, um, and quality control. So far, it seems to be a really good formula. We're able to build a guitar at a really good price point, about half the price of our average guitar. And uh, at, a, at a higher price point, you know, than, than anything in the Eastman line. And so far, we, we actually introduced the guitar, I believe, in July or August of this year, somewhere around the middle of the summer. And uh, so far, the reaction has been wonderful, both from both from reviewers and from our dealers. Yes, yes, definitely, because I think this is the very first one that just arrived here in Europe. And, you know, we were all like a kid in the candy store when they arrived. The, the overall quality... It's just been so good and it's so well made. Uh, and that's immediately, of course, when, when all the questions rose because we've seen some videos in the US, but we hadn't tried them ourselves yet. So as soon as they came, he said, wow, we have so many questions about it. Let's ask some more. And then Papine said, well, we can do an interview as well. And said, well, that would be awesome because then we can ask all the questions that we have. Um, so so what, what's, what would you say the, is the... It fits perfectly in the middle, right? So you you have the higher end Eastman's, for instance, the E20D. Then you have the Touchstones, and then you have the Hurlum series, uh, bourgeois guitars. And for what guitarist would you advise this guitar? I I think I really think it's a perfect guitar for someone who is you know not someone who is not looking for a guitar in the price range of a professional grade instrument but wants a good quality, playable, good sounding instrument, you know, that's maybe a step up from something that they've had before, or it could very well be that, hey, someone's a dreadnought player. They've known, they own a number of nice, you know, dreadnought guitars. They'd like an OM guitar, but really don't want to put the kind of money that they've put into, you know, 
a bourgeois maid or Santa Cruz or whatever, you know, a, a good quality, fine quality uh, dreadnought. Uh, we will, by the way, we in 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 the next year, uh, 2023, we'll be significantly expanding the Touchstone line. <laughs> that was my last question. <laughs> okay. So, so what you're seeing is the very is our very initial offering. Uh, we will be branching out into other body styles and uh, you know mahogany instruments and some fancier instruments as well. I've saw some interviews in the past, and, and and you've you've built guitars for so many legendary guitarists, and uh, for instance Tony Rice, and I, I've heard that he was super impressed by one of your OMs. And how have has Tony Rice, but also Brian Sutton and Cher Hill, been an influence on your guitar making, uh, your more modern style of guitar making? Well, first of all, I've never built a guitar for Tony, but I got to know him well. Back in the mid 80s, he used to perform. He was working out of Boston a lot and performing a lot in the in the Northeast. And I, I absolutely loved his playing and I would travel around and uh, see his shows whenever I could. At one meeting, I brought two guitars. I brought a Dreadnought and an OM. And I think I was in Boston. And I and I hadn't intended to show him the OM. I was bringing it along for some other reason. And he said, "Well, what's in the other case?" After we went through the, you know, the dreadnought, and he told me what he didn't like about it. Told me what he did like about it. And then he said, "Well, what's in the other case?" And I, so I opened it up and played it. He played it, and he said, "This is the sound you should be after." time to realize that what he was really talking about was uh, a balanced guitar. Tony and a lot of the flat pickers who followed Tony into this genre are really jazz players. I mean, Tony used like every note on the fretboard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that was of interest to him was a good balance between the bass and the treble mid-range at note, you know, string to string, note to note balance. And he wasn't quite expressing it in that kind of way. But once he played the OM, and I mean, the thing about the OM is the OM is naturally balanced. You have to work hard, you know, to make an unbalanced sound OM. Dreadnoughts <laughs> tend to be, yeah. to tend to be bottom endy. And mm -hmm. interestingly enough, what, um, what a large sound hole. I mean, Tony's famous guitar has had its sound hole enlarged. What that does to the tone of a dreadnought is it actually focuses the bottom end, the bottom, the, the, the bottom string. It's not as bassy. It's not as muddy. It's not as bottom endy, but it has more of a definition and it actually balances the instrument. Actually, had just have one more question uh, because, sure. because I had a lot of questions, but but going through the for the for the interview, you you already answered most of them, so that's that's really nice. Um, what what's your dream? And it's a pretty cliche question, but what's your dream with bourgeois guitars? So what would you like to achieve? Um, My objective is to 
and, and, and essentially touch all price points with the bourgeois brand. Cool. And also more, some more mandolins. And more mandolins. I didn't even mention mandolins. Um, we started. Uh, we've started with mandolins that are entirely made by Eastman because we don't. <laughs> did, did you ever build mandolins in the past or not? I've never built mandolins in the past. Uh, we are sort of slowly gearing up to begin to build mandolins, but s since we we were acquired by Eastman, we have essentially taken over all of the space in our shop just for guitars. We are looking for new shop space and we're going to need, you know, mandolins. You can't build mandolins on the same production line as guitars. It, it, the, mandolins will need their own space. So uh, the unique part of the, the, the M5A, which is our first, uh, our first mandolin model, is that the, all of the wood is torrified. The top, back, sides, and neck. Torrefaction is a process of uh, heating wood in, uh, in an oxygen-free environment and essentially cooking off what's called the volatiles, um, oils, sugars, resins, minerals. These materials have a damping effect on the wood. Now, over many years, and we're talking decades, all of the, vo all of the volatiles will either gasify or mineralize, and that enhances the ability of the, of the wood to vibrate. It's why one of the reasons why older instruments sound different from brand new instruments. So what we're essentially trying to do is artificially age the materials that we're building either guitars or mandolins from. And you can, we hope you can hear a little bit of that in the mandolin, uh, which is which is all torrified. This has a nice, very immediately quick free, open kind of sound. But it's really cool to see that, that it works in two ways, you know, that, that, that you're building um, a touchstones uh, guitars, but all the other way that Eastman also inspired to build mandolins on the other side. So uh, yeah, I really like to see that connection and yeah. Yes, and we've, yeah, we've really, um, you know, we, we've taken a lot of grief um, from some people in the US for having been acquired by Eastman. They say, well, all of these jobs will be exported to China eventually. Well, what's actually happened is we've grown 50% since 2019, since we've been, since we were acquired by Eastman and we expect to grow to another 200% by the time we move into a new facility. So it, 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 it's a collaborative thing that really benefits, you know, both companies. Super. And that's how it should be. That's how it should be. Exactly. And I'm having so much fun, I don't want to retire. Okay, cool. I, I think that was it with, uh, with the questions that I had. Do you have any questions for us? Uh, no, but I really want to thank you for supporting us. If the guitars that you order are, you know, it's not like all bottom of the line stuff for us. I mean, you've been ordering some really cool pieces. Super. Thank you for making these awesome instruments. Thank you very much for... For your time thank you thank you very thank much you for, for the nice interview it's been inspiring and uh see you next year good luck with those touchstone guitars <laughs> <laughs>